and welcome to another episode of Times Square Kung Fu. I am your host, Frankie Barboa, a.k.a. Shogun Supreme, man. Y'all know the deal. Y'all know the vibes, man. What's the vibes for today? Man, this video was anticipated by many over Twitter, bro. So I'll be comparing the A Diagram, the A Diagram Pole Fighter by Arrow Video versus the 88 Films release, man. And we're going to find out if this Blu-ray by Arrow is worth upgrading. You already have the 88 Films version. Or is, you know, the one to seek out if you guys don't have this film yet, which you guys definitely just need this movie in your collection, man. But before I get into anything else, man, I'd like to give a massive shout out to Peter and to Simon, man. These guys came through with providing some high resolution screen caps of the hour release of this film. Like a lot of people knew um, that people that follow me on Twitter know is that my order got delayed, something happened. And, you know, I had to order through the Arrow website and I'm still waiting for my copy. But once again, shout out to Peter, shout out to Simon, man. Y'all got some real ones, man. Y'all came through big. Y'all already know, and let's get into this video. Peace. So this 1984 film directed by um, Laura Carlung is like number three on my top 10 list of his filmography, man. And this like this film's a bona fide classic. Like if you guys started collecting, man, like you should definitely need this in your, you know, martial arts collection, man. It's probably in my... Is definitely my top 10 of overall martial arts films of all time. I should definitely do a video on my, you know, top 20, top 25 or whatever, you know, martial arts films. I think that'll be, a, you know, it'll be a fun one, man, because it's hard to rank a lot of films that you love, man. So I'm just going to not put them in order. I'm just going to put like, yo, these are the 25 bangers that you guys need. Now, with that said, man, um, this movie is very, very intense, man. Especially, you know, what happened during the making of this film. To some of you guys who don't know, man, um, Alexander Fu, you know, passed away during the making of this film. And they had to rewrite, you know, um, certain parts of this film because of his passing. And he was very well loved by a lot of people in the Hong Kong, you know, um, you know, film industry and by the actors in this film, man. And you could see how that affected him during the making of this film, man, especially Gordon Liu's character. Now, you know, this film, you know, you have a general and his um, sons being ambushed. And, you know, two of them escape. That happens to be Alexander Fu and Gordon Liu. And Alexander Fu, you know, goes back home with his mom and his sisters trying to figure out what's going on. She's thinking they won, asking for the father. And, you know, seeing how destroyed he is and how he's just not mentally there. You know, the news hits, man. Like, yo, like, my brothers and my, you know, my father, your husband, you know, are dead. And you see it throughout the days of, um, you know, the, the, the days that passed. You see how he's not okay to the point PTSD kicks in, you know. And, um, yeah, like his acting in this film, man. Like it's something that I didn't, I wasn't used to seeing for martial arts films. Because it almost felt like I was watching a full-blown drama. I forgot it was a, this was a martial arts film, man. He was one heck, of a, one heck of an actor, man. And he did, you know, for the short screen time he had, man. He definitely, like, stole them, stole them scenes, man. Once again, man, rest in peace to Alexander Fu, man. Taken away from us way too young, man. Tragically, man, you know? And um, Gordon Liu's arc. This I find an interesting connection. Of. Probably other people have made it, haven't read it. But it's very similar to his character in 36 Chambers, also directed by Lark Long, where he seeks refuge at the Shaolin Monastery. And, you know begins training with them. And there's something very similar in this film as well, man. He goes, seeks refuge and, you know, try to, you know, you know, learn martial arts from the monks. And in this film, he creates his own style. And in 36 Chambers, he creates his own chamber, you know. But the acting of Gordon Liu in this film, and you could see how um, Alexander Fu's passing affected him. Excuse me. It's his best role to me. Because you see the pain in his eyes, man. And anybody that went through, you know, losing a friend or a loved one, you know how hard that pain is, man. It's one of the sharpest pains that you can't even describe, man. And you see the, the redness in his eyes, like he was crying for days or certain scenes is watery. And, you know, with the five o'clock shadows, man, and everything, the man looks like, I've been through it, man. And this is being portrayed on the film, man. And knowing the history just adds a little extra to it, man. So, yeah, this film is dark. And the costume design is freaking beautiful, man. And you have a lot of great actors, especially Carrie Hugh, who does a fantastic job in this film. And she always, you know, comes through in Lark Long films, you know. 
But um, one thing to know about this film, man, yo. Let me tell you guys something. If you guys never seen this film or haven't seen it in a while, man, the fighting in this thing is no freaking joke. I repeat, it is no joke. Like, they're getting busy. They're getting in there. They're on that, you know, that flow, like we like to say in New York, man, let's go. And they're getting in there. They're getting busy. They're doing works, bro. They're like, yo, what's really, really good? And yeah, the, there's a lot of fighting in this film, man. And it just keeps, yo, my man, it's like you're waiting for the beat drop in a song. You feel me? And you get a lot of moments like that in this film, especially the last freaking fight. Bro, this thing, especially you got Golden Lou carrying, um, you know, Kara Hill in his back going all in and then you see these poses and these coffins man it looks like straight out of an anime man like yo Lord Kung Lung went super in on this freaking film man and again they was doing like that solid period man of 83 and 86 of um Shaw Brother films you know so yeah they did definitely he he got busy with this one man but um yeah like um this film man I'm telling you man you guys definitely need this film and also, man, before I get into the comparisons between the Arrow and the 88 films on release, man, you guys should definitely check out my homie from the UK, man, um, Fanatical Dragon. He also did a comparison with his unboxing videos comparing the, um, these both releases. And the way he does his reviews are freaking very different and very engaging. Where he has, you know, the Blu-rays laid out and he talks about them while he's unboxing them, man. So yeah, he goes over the special features on these Blu-rays and goes more in depth about the story and also the features that once again. But definitely check out um, his video, man. Let him know the Shogun sent you out, man. And you know, show love to the homie, man. He's a, he's a good guy, man. You know what I mean? So now let's do this comparison, man. And I have some interesting thoughts after I showed um, the image quality comparison because it's definitely a night and day comparison, man. So yeah, man, let's get into it. Now that you guys saw those those pictures, man, you see it was a massive difference. And um, let me give you guys a little um, little history about these transfers. The Arrow release was actually handled by, by them. They actually scanned the film and they fixed a lot of things that that needed to be fixed. You know what I mean? And um, the, when 88 Films did this release, you know, a few years ago, that was actually, you know, handed to them by Celestial Pictures. They're the ones who have um, the rights to all the Shaw Brothers films. So 88 Films didn't get to handle that negative from what I know. Because the way the 88 Films release looks, looks exactly like the, the HD release you saw on streaming services and also on iTunes. Now with that said, um, one thing to get out of the way, the the... The hour release has great special features and all that, and it's worth just owning for that. Now with the picture quality. I have to see this, I saw this thing like three or four times, the the, hour, the, the 88 Films release, you know, for making this video, and I was going back and forth between the pictures that my good friend Simon and Peter sent me. And as you guys saw in the pictures, it's like a big boost in colors, and, um, and fidelity in the hour release while the 88 films has this night dark tone to it and it looks good as well a lot of people i know prefer the arrow release and for me i prefer the arrow release in a way as well like as this great boost and everything but one once i started prepping for this video man um i actually like the 88 films release man i actually do like it a lot because 
you know, going back to what I said, you know, what happened with this film and the tone of the film, it fits that tone. If it, it fits that grittiness and you know what I mean? But also like the way the reds pop in the arrow and, and then the colors and everything, man. Like if you guys have uh, modern TV now, 4K TV, it really freaking pops more than the 88 Films one. And it's just like, wow, it almost looks like HDR being, you know, <laughs> like this, this film, you know, but my preference is um, I, re I, I was so used to seeing the 88 film release on iTunes. Then I got the Blu-ray. So I'm used to viewing the film like that. And um, but overall, the, 80, the Arrow release is the one to get the special features, um, the way the film looks like uh, it's just just looks damn good. You know what I mean? But again, like I said, when it comes, when I do these color comparisons at the, at the end of the day, I mean, these color grading comparisons at the end of the day is subjective. You know what I mean? Like some people prefer the 88 film one and some people prefer the Arrow release. Um, overall, the Arrow release is better, but I just, something about the 88 films one, you know, I just love a lot. It's probably like, I, like I mentioned, I'm so used to seeing it. And like I mentioned again, you know, like knowing the story and how this film goes like I, I i like that dark grimy look to it i mean but that's just me man let me let me know what you guys think in the comment section man but overall man when it comes to the special features and um image quality image quality and all that man i will release is the one to get man it's actually easy it's, it's easy to get now and um it has a great cover as well man and also the 88 films one man has that kung fu bob art man like you cannot beat man but for special feature wise, image quality and all that, man, Arrow killed it. You know what I mean? But, um, you know, with that said, man, you know, I'm going to give you guys my final thoughts, man. All right. Peace. So, yeah, man, you know, I hope you guys found the video informative, man. And you guys got, you know, a lot of details out of it, man. And it makes it easier, you know, to purchase. Not make it easier, but makes the decision easier to purchase which one you want, man. Like, I highly recommend the Arrow one. But, um... Yeah, we're in a great place right now, man. I feel like we're in another golden era of martial arts films, and a lot of labels are picking this up. I mentioned this in my previous videos with Criterion, Arrow. I think Shout Factory's gonna do a few of them. Um, Vinica Syndrome be doing more 90s action flicks, but I think they're gonna start releasing Hong Kong cinema joints as well. But, um, yeah, like, like I mentioned, you know, an abundance of times, man, the purpose of this channel is, you know, to show you guys you know how these films look, um, what they have to offer, and you know, I don't want you guys making, you know, the wrong decision of like getting, you know, like a release and that doesn't have the features, the audio and all that, you know what I mean? And also, you know, you guys get to be like, hey, wait a minute, you know, this one might look better, but I actually like the way this one looks. So, you know, again, it comes down, you know, subjective when it comes to color grading, you know, I prefer the, the creator's intent, a lot of people do. But it's good to put it out there because some people just like the stuff used to look good. And when I show people the pictures of the hour release, they're like, wow, that thing just pops, man. It looks amazing. And yeah, I mean, it looks freaking amazing. But um, I have a lot of videos set up for this week. Like I mentioned in this video, a lot of news were released by 88 Films. A lot of, you know, from all these labels, man. It's like, we're about to go broke. <laughs> you know what I mean? So yeah, man, you guys want to help the brother out, man? Like, yo, I have a cash app. I'm going to link it in a... And a freaking, you know, Vimo, whatever that thing is called, man. You know, like, because coffee's expensive, man. Freaking rent is too high in New York, man. So, y'all want to help a brother out, man. I'm going to link my cash app and all that in the description, man. But, um, yeah, I'm definitely going to... What do I have planned? I have an unboxing, man, because my good friend Simon sent me on a crazy package of DVDs, man. And there's some good stuff that he sent me, man. Yo, once again, mad love, man. Yo, I appreciate it, man. Like, that's... I owe you a drink, man, whenever I, got, I go out to Europe, bro. You know what I mean? But I'm um, definitely going to do an unboxing. And I'm going to do um, one that I wanted to do a while ago. But they announced it. And that's, you know, Young Bao's On The Run, man. And this film, bro. Beautiful, no art, crime type film. And this is Young Bao's best performance. Like, it is insane, man. I'm going to... Uh, compared the French DVD to the Hong Kong DVD release so we get an idea what 88 films is gonna do because this film is beautiful if you guys are into Blade Runner those type of greedy sci-fi films that look there's not a sci-fi film let me be clear it's not but if you like that look 
this film nails it, man. I mean, and this Blu-ray, when it comes out, them colors, boy, man, they're going to pop, man. They do the color grading right, and I have faith 88 films will do a great job going by how they came through with that Black Cat release because I was pounding on that, man, on social media. I want that blue filter, man, because that blue filter sets the tone for the film. And this one has a, some crazy colors, you know, being displayed, man. So, yeah, I'm going to compare the French DVD versus the um, Hong Kong one, man. So you guys could get an idea how this film going to look when we finally get the HD transfer. And what other one I want to speak about? Oh, my God. Righty Wrongs was just announced. And uh, people already know, man, I got beef, massive beef with the 88 Films, you know, cover art, man. It is bad. It is horrible, man. It's up there with Eureka Entertainment. <laughs> and everybody knows I'm not a fan of the artists they use for these kung fu films out there. This cover is just bad, bro. And the cover is a giant spoiler. And I want to talk about that, you know, because, you know, art is also very important to the film experience. Just as the color grading, the audio, is all part of it, man. But, um, you know, with that said, man, you know, like share and subscribe man you already know man and until the next one peace